I knew that this was going to be an amazing conversation. <laughs> I knew it. I, I told you guys, get ready to, to feel yeah. it. Like it's like a, like a, I don't know if you guys feel it, but it's like a, like a energy inside of you, bro. Then when we all energy. talk and we speak, it's like, it just, it resonates. You know what I mean? It heightens, it heightens me, bro. Like we all piggyback off of each other and we all feed off of each other in a very positive way, you know, and, and we do it constantly every day in a chat group. But now for people to actually witness how we, how our chemistry works together and how we feed off of each other, it just, it flows, bro. Like the energy, the frequency, it all resonates at, at the same vibration. 100%, man. And, and I think it's uh, it's very important to, to have a group, uh, accountability group or wisdom group or just a group that you can talk to, feel comfortable. Because it's very necessary, man. It's uh, You can't do this alone. You know, just like a company, you can't do it alone. You need, you need, you need those, uh, you need those aces. You need everybody uh, to play company. a role, man. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. And the way, th um, the the way that you guys were saying it earlier, man, it um, I think that Luis was was speaking when I was getting that message inside of me, and and it's very important for you to to tune in to when God speaks to you, right? So like our lifeline to the universe, to God, to the Creator, however you want to refer to it. I'm not a religious person either, right? But I do believe in my Creator is is prayer right so i pray i pray out loud i pray outside i pray in my head i pray in the shower i pray whenever i want to speak to god whenever i need guidance whenever i need anything i i pray to god right so and a lot of people don't understand the way that god works or the way that god speaks to us right so god will always use circumstances god will always use people god will always use messages to get that message across but it's up to us to be able to tune in to his messages right so like luis knows very well that yesterday he went to brooklyn for that sole purpose of god speaking to him mm -hmm. you know what i mean like he and he picked up on it a lot of people are asleep bro a lot of people won't ever pick up on something like that and they'll keep feeding themselves negative negativity and negativity and negativity like for every 10 dark souls there's only one soul full of light you know what i mean it's we're an outnumbered source here on earth and it's unfortunate because they don't understand, like you said, they don't understand what love is. They maybe they've never been given love. You know what I mean? But once you once you protect yourself with love and you give yourself love, then nothing can come and knock it down. You know what I mean? Nothing can come and take it from you because you know you understand that it's not their fault and it's not even their parents' 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 fault. This is generations and generations of generations of subconscious and unconscious programming to not feeling emotion you know what i mean especially in our in our community you know what i mean in our hispanic and our latino community we're we're a hey, you no gotta yores, toughen cabrón. up no yores, you gotta cabrón. toughen up no yores no don't yores. cry you know, you, know. I mean? you know what i mean don't cry yeah you know what i mean don't cry don't and and it's okay you know what i mean it's okay to be vulnerable it's okay to be a man it's okay to to feel you know what i mean so once you realize that it's not it's not anybody's fault you know what I mean? You carry yourself with grace, compassion, empathy, and most importantly, love. Then nothing is going to knock you off your mission. Nothing is going to knock you off your horse because you understand. You know what I mean? You understand how love works. And I think it was, was it John, was it John Lennon or was it, I think it was John Lennon that said, love is the answer to all things. You know what I mean? Maybe it was Bob Marley. I don't know. One of those two greats. But they say that love is the answer to all great things. And if you understand that, if you go past the word L-O-V-E and understand what it is and what it stands for, then it's good. No, papi, yo no quiero como tú. <clears throat> then you understand that that's all the medicine you need. That's all the medicine you need. If somebody's having a really bad day, I guarantee you, if somebody's having a real bad day, you go into a doctor's office and they don't want to fucking even talk to you and see you. If you look at them straight in the eye and persist, to saying, I hope you have a good day. Bro, they will remember you for a very long time because exactly. people will never forget. People will never forget how you make them feel. And if for five minutes you gave them peace and love, they will remember you. And the next time you come in, they'll open those doors. Exactly, Guaranteed. bro. And and I've, I've done it, bro. And I feel like that's 100% true, bro, because you feel that connection with people. And then like, they actually want to see you next time. Like, hey, this guy right here, he carries some different energy. You know, like, it's not just like you, the typical response from anybody. It'd be like, if you're in a bad mood and you come in and there's a bad mood, it just escalates. I just saw it the other day, bro, driving to work. 
And you know, you're driving to work and you're trying to get there early and shit. And but I'm conscious, like, dude, I'm not gonna put my life in in danger, like speeding like crazy. I'm gonna drive my way over there and smooth. Like before, maybe the Eric from like 10 years ago would have been different, right? But now I'm more conscious about my driving. But as I'm driving, bro, this one truck, because there's like uh, tra traffic uh, construction being done, one truck just kind of like goes into traffic uh, for another vehicle in front of me. And you start seeing this fucking, you know, interaction of, of road rage. And it's and I thought it was two dudes. But I find out as I drive up forward and I go past them, there's actually two females, one younger female and then an older female in their fifties. And I was like, this is insane. Like they're just having a bad day and now it's escalating. And before they get to work, they're going to be in a bad fucking mood. They were telling each other off the whole way over there. You know, like as I'm following, I'm, I'm behind watching all this shit unfold. I'm like, dude, what the hell? Like they just escalated a situation where, Hey, maybe the girl that walked in. Yeah. She was barging in, but the girl that, that was behind her the older ladies is the one that started it <laughs> she said the older lady started it bro and i was like damn dude that's that's sad that's that's our that's our society right now like we're just raging for anything and we need we need more love out there bro i feel like exactly we what you're saying we, bro. we need more love out there we're conditioned to react versus to respond all the time and that's our exterior environment conditions us to that and once we can grab a hold of ourselves inside and say, I'm not going to succumb to that, your frequency, your vibration, your environment, everything about you and around you will change because you start flying high, bro. You start flying high. You know what I mean? And it's, it's almost, it's almost like a rebirth. You have to, you have to, when you, when you spiritually awaken, you have to keep in mind that it's almost like, like you're going to be reborn, bro. Mm -hmm. Like you have two choices, right? You have two choices. So you're either going to wake up and make the change, which is going to be great difficulty. And as all of us can attest here that once that happens, it's going to be fucking hard. You know what I mean? Or you can go back to sleep and be another sheep and just live, not thrive, survive. That's all you have to do. 90% of our fucking human lives are on survival mode all the time mm -hmm. we're not programmed to thrive we're not programmed to to you know like be plentiful or be in abundance we're not programmed for that that they don't want us to do that so in order for you to want to do that you have to go against the grain against the current bro like you know what i mean like i love the story i love the story about the, the, I don't know if you guys are, are aware, but I'll share it with you guys. And it's a little off topic, but this, I always revert to this when I when I go back to my spiritual awakening. So the American bald eagle, their life expectancy is about 70 years old, right? When the eagle gets to about 40 years old, its talons are shortened. Its beak is no longer sharp. Its feathers are no longer able to carry it like in the wind. So what the eagle does is it has two options. The eagle has an option to die, right? Or has an option to climb in a mountain in solitude, right? And then what it does is it scrapes its talons to the bone, and then it's, it breaks its beak to the bone, and it plucks its own feathers, right? Giving it an opportunity to get a new beak, get new talons, and get new feathers. However, in order for the eagle to do this, it must be in solitude for years, because it's now vulnerable because it's now not an eagle right and when the eagle comes back from the rebirth it's a completely new different dangerous very dangerous animal and i love that idea because that's what you go through when you choose to wake up bro you have to pluck your own feathers you have to break your own beak you have to break your belief system you have to do everything differently because nothing that was that you were doing was working once you're conscious enough to realize that that's what you need to do nothing is going to stop you you're going to become a very dangerous individual and i don't mean dangerous as in you're going to be a fucking killer bro because we're all fucking killers if we need to be i mean you're going to be so dangerous that nobody's ever going to be able to fuck with you or get you off of your fucking game or off of your mental state or off of your emotional state once you control your emotions you control your vibration you control your thoughts 
nothing and nobody can come and disturb you. Man. It's like you said, bro. We're, we're going to be tested, bro. The more awake you are, the more tests, the more tests are going to come. And that's what I'm realizing, like I said, with all these different jobs that I've been in. Like, bro, these are all tests and you keep failing. It's like this. We ask God for patience and he's just not going to give us patience. He's going to give us situations that we got to test our patience. That's really, that's how he works. He doesn't work like, oh, you want patience? There you go. It's just like we, we pray for money. He's not going to give us money. He's going to give us a little bit and see how we handle that money to see if we can handle a, a great wealth of money. Yeah. So, like, again, that's where I'm at with it, bro. I, I know I'm being tested in, in both ways, in the way I manage my money and in the way I uh, react to different people. So I just have to remember that. I'm This is a, a, a spiritual warfare, and I'm constantly going to be tested, especially when you're trying to do the right thing. Because it's easy to do the wrong thing. We could all pick up and do, do anything wrong really fast. But how hard it is to live with integrity, to live with values and morals, and to, and to stand what you believe in. You know what I mean? And that's what we have to constantly remind ourselves. We're going to always be tested. Always remember that you're always going to be tested. And it sounds silly, but just ask yourself, whenever you're being tested, what would Jesus do? You know what I mean? Right. What would Jesus do every time you're being tested? What would Jesus do? Go from there. Yeah, hey, Luis, it's like you said, brother, God God will give you the opportunity. If you ask him to be successful, if you ask mm -hmm. him to be rich, if you ask him for patience, he's going to give you the opportunity to be that. But there's a test behind it, always. There's going to be a test behind it. People are going to test your shit, always. And and one of the, the common denominators for all of us is that we're living amongst a lot of people who are not, right, in the same mind frame. And, and we're talking about the what's causing a lot of that is that and Luis and Rob and all of us were talk talking about that, that our communities are surrounded by a lot of tools that work against us, you know? Like, you, remember Luis, you said there was about six, um, they said like alcohol stores, like around you or in, the, in the, like a certain radius of your neighborhood. And then Robert was talking about, bro, we have like uh, loan, loan offices, or not like with those loan companies that those give you like the higher interest rates like 30%. Yeah, we have liquor stores everywhere around here, bro. Yeah, everywhere. I'm talking about you could walk right now less than a mile from where I'm at, and there's about three liquor stores. Literally. And if you keep walking, it's going to be another one in every single block. Every single block in Patterson, New Jersey is a liquor store. So imagine that. Like, we're, we're battling against that, bro. Like, society follows that victim to, to that frequency like you know what i have a liquor store there i'll just get my my liquor on and forget about all the shit that these guys are talking about you know what i mean it's an easy road bro but it's usually it leads you to your demise you know like it's gonna be a doomsday you know because you're, you're just setting yourself up for failure because your your uh, ticket is to like just numb everything and that const that constant frequency of being in that pattern is gonna just like you're never going to get out, bro. And that's that's what Jay's talking about. Like, they don't want us to know that we can go into the mountains, you know, like in the in, in the in the anal an analogy, not in real sense. Like, we're not going to go into the mountain, but this is like going into the mountain, what we're doing here. We're four eagles in the mountain, bro, trying to like, you know, sharpen our tools. But technically, if nobody tells us, it's kind of hard to like navigate these waters. Like, dude, like if you, you try to do it on your own, it's hard, bro, because everything is just like there's a lot of obstacles in between everything that you need to learn. And especially because the frequency that's out there, the algorithm they created for us, and I always say this, bro, is like for us to, to have the systematic feeling of what they want us to be. Like, oh, you're only getting there, bro. You're not going to go past this. You're not going to get your education. You're only going to get stuck at graduating from high school or and, and getting that job eight to five and, and being a, a part of the program, not being the actual collaborator, the creator or producer of a something. You're just going to be fall victim to that. And a lot of our kiddos, bro, we need to wake them up because right now that shit is on steroids. You know what I mean? The phones, the gadgets, all these things are very manipulative to making them think a certain way. So we as fathers and 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 one of these days when you're your father, uh, Luis, you know what I'm saying? Like you're going to see how the impact of how we lead our children in the right direction, you know, like, like, for me, I get home from work, man, I'm fucking tired, but I'm, my son's like, Dad, are we going to the park? I'm like, I can easily say no, like, we'll go tomorrow. But I'm like, let's go. And I get up, 
and I'm tired as fuck. <laughs> but I know that if I don't do that, he's going to be stuck on the phone. He's going to be stuck in the VR. He's going to be doing all this stuff that watching videos and, and, and they're being raised by all this technology for that hour or two that we're in the park, bro. It's just expansion of the mind, like letting him be a kid, you know, uh, play soccer, play basketball, play baseball, play football, just play tag, play in the playground, talk with him, teaching him about being a team player, te teaching him about communication. I'm pretty sure you have experiences like that, Jay, with your son, as you, as you teach him like the martial arts, like you, you take him out of the, the digital thing, you know, like, and it's just, Amazing Bro, how impact. I'll I'll give you a live example. Check this out. Sebastian, come here. I'll give you a live example, and I hope it doesn't backfire on me because I'm gonna catch him <laughs> off guard. But check, check this out. So it's very important, Sebastian, come here. <clears throat> it's very important to instill values into your child right. and sometimes i'm tired sometimes you know i bro i have a broken i have a fractured foot right now oh. and i still go outside to my son and play with my son and play catch 20 30 minutes whatever i can you know what i mean so check this out it's very important for you to teach your kids values right sebastian can you share with the gentleman here what your family values are son oh respect uh-huh god uh-huh Trustworthiness. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. You remember the other ones? Okay, so there's five, right? So work with me. You said. Oh, love. Uh huh. What else? One more. <laughs> you're just nervous because you're on the camera, bro. Breathe, relax. It's no, okay. I... You forgot. Okay, so repeat them one more time. What is it? God. Uh huh. Love. Uh huh. Trust. Uh huh. And. Respect. Respect. See? And he's That's nine, amazing, bro. bro. That's amazing. He's nine. Thank you, son. That's beautiful. Tell him, tell him, you know, thanks from the bottom of our hearts, bro. That that was amazing for him to be on camera and to say that to us. It means a lot and it, it inspires us to teach our kids values and, and, and instill them into their, you know, hearts. Thank you so much, Sebastian. Yeah. And and I, sometimes I'm I'm hard on him because I know what he's up against you mm -hmm. know what i mean but showing them the importance of love compassion respect it's all it's gonna mold them into the little warrior that he's meant to be you know what i mean my son is nine bro you know what i mean and, and he's he's very aware he's very aware of his surroundings he's very aware of other people he's very aware of his emotions you know what i mean so it's like you were saying it's it's important for us to to pay it forward to our future generations now that we're aware now that we know it's very important for us to slow down and make sure that they're taken care of because they're they're the future bro 100% and i work you know one of my other mm -hmm. jobs my part time job i work with kids that are on probation and parole and man when i tell you the way these kids talk about murders and shootings it's like they're so desensitized of violence and they don't value nothing. They don't value, like, they don't value a human life. And I was having a conversation with one of my other friends, and he said, hey, he said, yo, Lou, do you, do, you, do you speak affirmations into their life? Do you tell them, hey, you're worthy, you're valuable? He said, start doing that to them. A lot of these kids never heard that before. They never heard, yo, you matter. Yo, I love you. Hey, man, good job. Yo, I'm proud of you. They never heard these things. They come from parents and generations of, of destruction and it's I feel like I'm placed there to give them that plant those little seeds man and just yo man you, you matter you're worthy yo man I love you yo, you did a great job today instead of always you know being so hard on them they already got the streets they got the older dudes that, that don't have no guidance that they they corrupt the minds of these younger dudes so it's like I feel like yo God put me in this position to be able to give light to these kids man and it's like it's so true him being nine and having those values. Oh, my dog is wild. Um, <laughs> and having those values, man. Um, bro, these the kids that I deal with, it's like, yo, they're rough, man. And I sometimes I feel so bad because I feel powerless. And it's like, it's so much that I, I, I can't do, but so much. You know what I mean? It's like sometimes I want to take their pain away and be like, yo, man, let me put you in a different environment. See how, how you could thrive, thrive and be better. But, bro, man, it kudos to you bro for the way you, you both for you guys all three of you guys the way you guys are, are 
are developing these kings and queens because these are the future kings and queens. They're the future. Mm-hmm. We're we're going down. They're going up. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's just that's that's how life works. And it's like I'm so I used to be um like desperate. Like, Yo, God, when am I gonna have my kid? When am I gonna have my kid? But now I'm glad that he allowed me to wait because me back then, what could I, what could I, what could I taught him? Why could I? Well, I wouldn't. I would probably lead him into my footsteps. I wouldn't have nothing positive to give them because I was wow. in my. I didn't have. I have no positivity in me. You know what I mean? I was blinded by the streets and blinded by what I thought was real, bro. I thought that I was surrounded by fake love. I didn't know what real love really meant. So I got out of that, that, that out of that stage, and God helped me get out of that. So, bro, keep keep giving your kids love because the kids that I'm dealing with, they lack so much love, man. Bro, I was at the park. Beautiful, beautiful feedback, guys. I was at the park yesterday. I was working, and it was a community event, right? And there was this whole atmosphere of people giving information, having little activities, and. And it was at a park, at a local park. So we're all in this area, right? And they had like water, they had all kinds of toys and everybody was giving them stuff. And I was part of that, you know? And then behind me, another part of the park, there's a soccer field. And I love soccer, right? So it, there is a, a a dad, which it looked like, I mean, I don't know if it was a dad or a coach, but I finally found out it was a dad. But I saw them practicing soccer behind us and they didn't even care about the event. You know, they were like, they, they never came to this side to get the free stuff. They were just in the mode, bro. But the beautiful thing about that, bro, the dad had like this, like, uh, he had like little activities for them to, to learn soccer skills. Right. And every, every, uh, little goal that they had, or like they had activities in every little stand that they had to do these, these, uh, act- activities or skills developing, they had an affirmation each one bro so every time they would face it they would see it and I, i'm thinking from the outside like that's monumental bro this yeah, guy bro. is not only practicing soccer with his kids but Life. he's teaching them like different affirmations and every single one of those tasks that they had to do it was about six or five of them and one said i am strong you know i am i am great i will you know like just a bunch of affirmations bro like beautiful bro and so i was like dude when this is over, I'm going to go talk to that guy. So I finished around two, like two hours later, and I, he was still there, bro, with his son and, and his kids. So I'm, I, I go, hey, dude, what's up? Come over here. And he, he comes up to me. He's like, hey, my son. Hey, shout out to Joshua Jerry, if you're listening. Joshua Jerry, that's his name, Joshua Jerry. He said, no, nah, man, I'm not a coach, but um, these, these are my kids. And um, they could do just right off the bat, bro, you're doing an amazing job because – the affirmations and the the things that you're teaching them right now that's beautiful bro I just want to tell you like i'm 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 excited and i would love to even like if you if you're able like to coach or like collaborate with me i can bring my kids and you can bring your kids and we can practice bro cuz i like i like what you're doing he's like bro just let me know so we switch numbers and everything so he had like an older kid that was about 16 he had a little kid that was 8 or 9 and then he had two little girls that were about seven and and uh five they were all there practicing with the dad and the mom was there watching them practice they had like a whole setup bro like uh goalies they had like little skill developing like activities and it was just amazing they never came to our side to get the free stuff they were in their zone bro i was like bro that's amazing that's beautiful bro i want to be on that side you know like shit yeah i'm practicing with them but that's how i think it like if if i was just a regular person I was thinking like, oh, these they're not taking advantage of the free stuff. You know, if I would not have the mind that I have right now, I'd be like, oh, they're missing an opportunity. Look at them over there just playing soccer. And I wouldn't yeah. even seen the affirmations. The affirmation would have been blind to me. Like, oh, well, they have words. That doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? So, but I saw the other side. I was like, shit, this is an amazing opportunity. I got to talk to this dude before I leave. I got to talk to him, meet this guy and get his information and, uh, and luckily i was able to get his information so I'm, a, I'm gonna try to get a link up so i can practice with my son and, and all that stuff because i love soccer bro so and it was amazing you know he's like i don't have a team bro but i just like to practice with my kids he's like dude that's amazing beautiful bro really beautiful bro. uh i wanna i wanna share a story uh let me just get outside because i'm actually eating in a in a restaurant so Il-Rob. wait I just saw 
Oh, excuse me. Thank you. Sorry. I didn't get outside. You know who? You know who I saw inside, bro? Who? I saw Henry Cuellar. <laughs> no way, bro. Talk to yeah. him, bro. Nah. Nah. nah bro. Now, anyway, so I, I wanna I wanna share a story. Uh, I think I shared it already with you guys. Uh, now that we're talking about uh, uh, kids and, and children and, and values, you know what, man? I, I didn't fully embrace being a father maybe about two three years ago, and I understand what Luis is saying. Um, you know, when you bring children to the world, they should change your life, right, for the better. Uh, but the thing is, for my in my view. Well, my mindset that at that time was I was very mature, man. I didn't know who I was. I don't know what I wanted. Um, so, you know, I was lost. I didn't even know that I was lost uh, inside, um, not knowing what I really wanted. So when I had when well, when we had our kids. I don't know, man, I, I sometimes I saw it like like as a burden for, for, for me, like because, you know, I'll admit it, man, I was very selfish and. There's times that I still uh, have, uh, uh, um, I work on that because I find myself being selfish still. Um, so it took me, uh, me being rock bottom to realize what ma what matters and what matters to me. And when I worked through that, through that, you know, I know that Jay was talking about the ego. Um, the, 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 another word was pain, pain right uh pain that's what i felt pain you know trying to rebuild myself from the bottom up um it's very it's a hard pill to swallow but it's a it's a process that i knew that i had no choice man i, I had no choice I, I turned to god and i and i asked him like please help me out like because I'm, I'm totally lost um and and he helped me man and, and through that rebuilding phase of myself and what i really wanted out of life you know i noticed that i had neglected like, my kid you know, I neglected my children and, you know, now I have a better relationship with them. They've seen the changes that I, that I've gone through, uh, the persistence. Um, I don't, I don't take them for granted. And, and you touched on something, uh, Eric, about, you know, that when you get home and you're tired, there's times that I, I well, back then I would always say that like, no, I'll, I'll play with you later. I'll play with you later. And he would always come like, hey, but you said that you were going to play with me. No, I feel tired. I would always come up with an excuse. Uh, but now, like, when I do that, when I catch myself doing that, I realize, like, hey, dude, this is, he's asking you for, for he wants to spend time with you, man. You know, don't, don't take it for granted because they're going to grow older and they're going to leave and they're going to remember just you that you never wanted to spend time with them. So I take that to heart now. And um, that's, that's helped me a lot. Uh, it's just a process of, of, of yourself, man. What are your priorities? What are your values? Uh, that's something that I'm working on. Uh, I, I was uh, talking with Jay about that, you know, the, about the values of oneself and he gave those, I mean, that, that's just awesome. You know, those, um, those values that he and his son share, you know, that, that's something that I, that I will do, that I will work on because I want them to remember, you know, whenever they're lost. Whenever they're like, they don't know where to turn to, they can remember those values that they have in their lives. And that's like a blueprint for them to move forward, not to feel completely lost, you know? So that's something that I do uh, take in like a hundred percent. And it's just, it's just values, man. And, you know, PBD, you know, Patrick Ben David, you know, he's also a mentor of mine, you know, cause I, I look to him, all the values that he's instilled and he talked about his non-negotiables, something that uh, I know we were talking about that in the frequency group uh, yesterday. I think uh, Jay had said, you know, I will not negotiate this, 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 this. And that's something that I got to work on, too. Like, I will not tolerate somebody lying to me. I will not tolerate disrespect. I will not tolerate, you know, um, you know, being cussed at or whatever, you know. You have to have those non-negotiables so you can put yourself boundaries. Because if you don't put yourself, if you don't have any boundaries, then everybody's going to step on you. I don't know why I went into that tirade, but <laughs> mm -hmm. but as far as going back to the to the children, it's just something that I do um, I do embrace it now, and, and and I'm and I'm glad and I'm and I'm grateful that you know I woke up and then I realized that you know they're your kids, man. You know they're just not they're just you should love them. You know it, it should come from the heart. 
not being forced to do it because you're a parent. It has to come from the heart. So, yeah, I'm going to share that story. Yeah. Beautiful feedback, Rob. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, it's like, uh, like you're saying, bro, like at least you were able to, like you've gone through the turmoils, like, dude, you have to dig deep to really find out and be like, thank you for being vulnerable and sharing that right now, bro. Like a lot of people won't ever, uh, you know, take ownership of what mistakes have done, you know? And I think you've proven that a dude, I can take ownership and be like, you know, I can change it all around. I don't have yep. to be stuck in that mindset that I used to think about and like, Oh, and just you have that regret, like no, bro. Like you still have time, bro. Like you, you're doing it. You're living proof that you've taken that that mindset and be like, you know what, the old Robert is that that is not gonna control me anymore. I'm actually gonna take these uh, moments of of hanging out with my kids and my family and be intentional about it and have something beautiful to share. Like that moment in time, bro. That is just you can't ever take that away, bro. You know what I mean? So, but props to you, brother. Props to you, man. We're we're running low again on time. Just to let y'all know, we have like seven minutes left. Are you down <laughs> for another part or no? I'm down, bro. <clears throat> Just uh, I want to pre pre warn y'all before because I know that a lot of y'all are busy, or at least Rob, he's in. I'm, I'm today. I'm outside in the studio. I'm in the Infinite Studios right now, God given studios. So I, I don't know if y'all can tell. <laughs> I heard the birds I'm chirping. Eating. I'm eating at a restaurant. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So if y'all want to do a part three, we can keep we keep, keep on going. It's seven minutes till we wrap it up this one. But um, what do y'all got to say, guys, on this on this type of uh, vibe right now, with the whole uh, you know just being the forefront and lead? Like I think the values part, do Rob and Jay and and Luis, is something that that I know I've had, but I've never really written it down. And and I told Jay and I told uh, Rob that my task for this year is to actually write it down so that my family can see it. And I haven't done it, to be honest. And, and that was what, like a, a couple of months ago, Rob, when we talked about values, yes, sir. maybe like early in the year. And yep. I haven't done it, bro. I need to sit down and really make time for that. I think it's very important. Uh, like oh, you said, yeah. it's, the, it's the blueprint that's gonna follow your family for many, many ages, bro. Like I'm thinking about 100 years from now, like when I have great, great, great grandkids and be like, yo, Castillo's bro, we stand for this, you know, like we, yep. we're, where God, there's there's love, there's respect, there's honor, there's integrity, you know, there's balance. Like it doesn't have to be five. You can be as many as you want, right, Jay? It doesn't have to be five. Yep. But no, nope. I'm pretty sure within uh, within those five, you can you know fit a lot of those like A, B, and C. You know, like <clears throat> there's love, there's integrity, there's balance, there's like you need to keep on learning stuff like that, and and be humble. I think being humble is a hundred percent needed. Like you need to be humble wherever you go, man. You never know who you're talking to. Yep, you that's a non-negotiable as well, brother. You never know who who's uh, in front of you. Like, like Henry Guayar is right there eating with uh, with uh, Rob right now. You know, Henry Guayar is a uh, he's like a what is he like a state representative? State I think state yeah. rep. Yeah, yeah. He's a state representative. He's a congressman. Texas. Congressman, something like that, over here in Texas. Political like game. A, He's a very yes. high political figure, but if you go up to him and you just talk to him like a regular person, I'm pretty sure he he should be in that that point of view. Where dude, he works for a lot of people here in South Texas. He brings the money. He should be humble about it. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and, and I mean, black people. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. And I and so I was looking at the State of the Union, and he actually you know he came out with Biden. Yeah, you know, no, I saw. I give him a hug. So, yeah. but, you know, I don't want to get too political, but yeah, I understand what you're saying, Eric. Uh, I think uh, if you talk to him like in a human side, mm -hmm. you know, maybe you, you, you'll you see a different side of him, but but that's where politics and, and being real, that's where it, uh, you reach. You gray know, areas. You can't be really 100%. Yeah, gray areas. There you go. So, but yeah, I, I get it. Yeah, man. So that values, bro, that's, that's a, the game changer. When uh, when it's, you guys were talking about it, I was like, I need to do it. So yeah, it's it's equipment, brother. It's equipment that we and I mean we figuratively say it, but I strongly believe that we're we're warriors. You know what I mean? Like some people are meant to be scholars, some people are meant to be politicians, some some people are meant to be teachers. Like I know that I'm a warrior. It's in my DNA. It's in my blood. I'm not saying I'm going to go out there and fight a war and do this. If I have to, I will. But I'm saying that that my DNA is built to withstand battles. You know what I mean? Like, so I know consciously and subconsciously I have to prepare myself with tools, with weapons, and with armor, bro. 
So I, you know, like when I start sculpting my armor, like I know that that God needs to be present so he can shield me. I need a shield. You know what I mean? I need my armor. I need my helmet. I know that God is going to be a part of that. You know what I mean? I, I need a weapon. I need <clears throat> I need my sword. I need my staff. You know what I mean? I need my bayonet. So I know that I need compassion. I need empathy and I need patience, bro. You know what I mean? So and then um, there's things that you need in, in order for you to gather yourself up and to prepare yourself for everything that you're going to go through because unfortunately i don't want to say it's unfortunately right maybe i worded that wrong but mm -hmm. due to certain circumstances our lives are going to be a little more difficult than the next you know what i mean like so i know that that i have to brace myself you know so when the highs come when you know i really enjoy them when i can you know like i'll, I'll enjoy life and and i'll and i'll you know I'll thank God every chance that I get and I'll breathe and, and I'll say life is beautiful. You know what I mean? But just like a, a Ferris wheel, it always comes back down. It always comes back down. So through those tough times, I know that I'm equipped to go through them, you know, to go through anything, bro. I've gone through so much in my short amount of time that I can only imagine what I'm about to go through in the next half of my life. You know what I mean? So I spend a lot of time preparing my my mind my heart and my body for anything, you know, and I, and I feel that it's important to, to do that because if you don't do that, then you're going to get hit with something blindsided and it's going to stop you on, in your tracks. You know what I mean? So if there's anything that I can control inside and in interior or in the flesh, you know, I, I will do that. I constantly read, I constantly pray, um i'm not as active as i should be but i plan to be you know and this year it's it's like robert always says i have to hold myself accountable and, and consistency is is a part of something that i think we all lack in you know mm -hmm. so being consistent and being disciplined is going to push you i was telling my son yesterday because we were working out and he's like we usually do um five miles right so however long it takes we don't time it however long it takes for you to run five miles you're going to run five miles, right? So yesterday, he he wasn't feeling it. You know, and I told him, Sebastian, push through it. And he's like, I'm only going to do 15 minutes. And I'm like, son, it's when we have these bad days that the best workouts are going to come out of you. Believe me. And he's like, oh, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. And he kept just negative, negative, negative. And I was like, Sebastian, just do it. Breathe, control your breathing and do it. And then he saw me push through it. And then I hit a new record. Right. And he's like, you know what? And I told him, you can stop at 28 minutes. Mm -hmm. And he's like, no, nope, I got to do five <laughs> miles. I got to do five miles. I got to do five miles. So then when he did the five miles, he did it. And I was like, you see, didn't, and you didn't want to do it. And I'm like, you know what, son? I apologize if I was a little hard on you today, but you got to understand that discipline is the ability to do things when you don't want to do things, when you know that they have to get done and you don't want to do them. Because there's going to be points in life where you're going to be put in situations where you're going to say, you know what, I don't want to do it. And the ability to say, I have to do it, is going to be the difference between you achieving something and you not achieving something. If you want to be a world champion, he speaks, hey, Dad, I don't want to go to college, I want to be in the UFC. Okay, then you have to have a champion's mentality. 100%. So I'm instilling that in him, bro. You know what I mean? So I tell him, you know what, and I know he's only nine. You know what I mean? So I'm not... I'm not pushing it on him, but I'm like Luis said earlier, I'm planting seeds, planting seeds, I'm planting seeds. So he knows what he's capable of. 